citizens will have to develop a sort of electronic common sense, a way of behaving in the electronic world which is similar to the way that they behave in the real world if we are going to make real progress. Now, of course, there is always legislation if things go wrong, but it's much better if things don't go wrong in the first place. I do think there are obligations. I mean, one is to behave responsibly with how you hand out your data. Another is very simple things like delegation. You know, we have to remember there are still a lot of people in this world who quite happily give their PIN number to their credit card to other people, give their passwords to other people, etc. Yeah, this has consequences. Nice. In security, I think, you know, you only have so many tools and it's about using the best tools for the job. So let's talk in terms of alternatives. And I think we've heard basically three types of alternatives on the table so far in terms of solutions. One is this idea of common sense, which I totally agree is very limited. Uh, one is the idea of using legislation, which I think we're all coming to the conclusion that it's uh, probably too slow moving and rather blunt instrument. And the third is the software part, where good idea, and it can certainly be part of the game, but the human brain will always be more powerful than software. So just one last thing on this thing about context is that it's also expectations. Yeah? We know, of course, there's no 100% security, but you know, little things mean a lot. So when I talk about electronic common sense, I'm going to change my words because I think risk comment is very good. Let's call it basic common sense. One less example, yeah? If someone were to approach you on the street and start asking you awkward questions, well, you're going to be a little bit hesitant. You don't just, I hope, just give you all your details out. But it's amazing what people will do in a chat session on the web.